Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repairs and today we're doing a repair video. So I just got back from a garage sale where I picked up this guitar for $20. So yeah, I like all guitar collectors and love garage sales because you never know what you're going to find. You hear those stories of someone finding really cool guitars at garage sales for cheap. That's not so much the case anymore because everybody has the internet on their phones. So Everybody can pretty much look up to see what anything's worth. Um, but uh, occasionally you still get lucky. So this guitar was in an old case under a table. I asked about it. And uh, the lady said that there were some issues with it or something didn't work. And she only wanted $20 for it. So I gladly paid her for that. And uh, yeah, so this is like a 1960s Rickenbacker clone made in Japan. I did a little bit more research. It's from the Fujijin factory. So they make pretty good stuff. And uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's got that fire glow finish. That's what Rickenbacker calls it. It's semi hollow, like a Ricky. And same shape. It's got a tremolo, the toaster style pickups, like on a Rickenbacker. Rickenbacker, rather. And uh, kind of the same similar saddle and then our control layout is the same as a Rickenbacker so we've got uh, volume and tone for each pickup as well as a blend and a three-way pickup selector our fingerboard is pretty cool it's got these shark fin <laughs> gold sparkle acrylic inlays which are pretty neat and the rosewood looks nice for the fingerboard we've got another shark fin truss cover thing uh, there's actually some routes in the headstock. I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe it's for to keep it a little bit lighter. And there's our brand Pyramid Guitars. We're missing one ferrule on the machine heads. And uh, this Rickenbacker style pickguard is pretty interesting. They're actually, there's two pieces. So this top piece mounts to the bottom piece. This is used as the actual pickguard. And then this is used to house all of the controls. Um, I was playing it at the garage sale and it was buzzing up a storm, so it likely is going to need a file and recrown. Uh, it's a little tricky on these Japanese guitars because the frets are so low already that uh, doing any fret work on there is kind of iffy sometimes, but we'll see how it goes. Let's have a look at the back here. Yeah, more of that fire glow finish it's actually really nice looking and it's in really good condition there's hardly any scratches or dings anywhere just kind of surface level stuff it's got some really interesting binding on the back here it's got that uh, checkerboard black and white style binding all the way around and the neck is sunburst as well it looks like the neck is mahogany that's kind of the green that I'm looking at the body looks maple and they bursted the headstock as well got some cheapy tuners on there and I just had to plug it in. I haven't even tried it out yet. Um, she said there might be something wrong with the electronics. She said someone had tried it and there was an issue anyway. But we're going to have a look here. So, okay, I can see right away this volume pot is super loose. Oh, we do have some sound though. So, tone and volume works in the neck position. Let's try the bridge. Uh huh. So that's likely the issue. We're getting nothing out of the bridge. Sometimes these switches are need a little contact cleaner and then they work. Yeah, we're gonna have to open it up and take a look. All right, so I'm going to take the strings off. I'm going to open up all the electronics. We're going to look to see if there's anything obvious uh, that we can fix. Uh, if not, we might have to dive a little deeper. And then we're going to do a fret level on this neck as well.
All right, so opening up the electronics, I believe I've located the issue right away. So if uh, we can just focus here. There we go. So right here, this wire that has a capacitor on it, it's got uh, a bare lead that's coming over to it, but uh, it appears that it's come off. So this capacitor is... Uh, soldered on there so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and solder that back on and see if that fixes the issue and then we can know right away if that's the problem or not Alright, so that seems to have fixed the problem, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, so now that's that's resoldered. We can flip it around and try it here. So here is the bridge pickup. The volume of the tone seemed to be working. I just gotta tighten up that one pot. So yeah, the electronics are all working now. So it was a uh, relatively simple to fix. It was just one bad wire that was open. But we can hear that the pickups are pretty uh, stereophonic. Pa 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 pa. So. It's not necessarily a horrible thing. They can sound pretty unique sometimes. So I guess we'll see how that goes. As far as the insides go, let's have a quick look at the uh, electronics here. So it looks fairly standard. We've got a um, pretty standard three-way um, import switch. We get some interesting capacitors here, some big giant ones um, that they're using. And uh, got a normal kind of a green capacitor. This is the problem area that had come undone. So that's fixed now. And yeah, they're using mini pots. Um, pretty old. There's no pot codes on here, so I can't really date them. But uh, yeah, interesting. I just want to check one of the pickups for science, but there's not a lot to it. So it's basically a really thin pickup, kind of like a P90 style. And then on the back, there's no branding. It's just smooth metal. And uh, they use this little piece of foam here to adjust the pickup height. And that's about it. One hole in the body to go through. And I'm sure the neck is exactly the same. And here's a look at our bridge. So it's just kind of a, a Rickenbacker style bridge. It's got uh, three different saddles for each one so you can adjust your streak spacing and then a little screw and spring that you can adjust the intonation back and forth and that all just sits on an adjustable screw here on the bridge that you can adjust your height and the Bigsby is uh, very similar to or the trim is very similar to a Bigsby style it's just got the spring and then the uh, strings go around there and you can, uh, you can adjust the vibrato there all right, so before we file the frets, I'm gonna make sure that the fretboard and the neck is has the proper action and relief in it. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that the neck is quite straight before I do any filing. That way you can adjust it through the truss rod if you need to afterwards to uh, make sure there's no buzz. So this is my file. <clears throat> I made it about, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. I just uh, epoxied um, a painter's spackle handle to a really nice level bastard file. It's not fancy, but it works really well. Um, so what, I, what I'm going to do is just file all these frets. Um, so in the light, you'll be able to see that there's a flat surface all the way through to the, from the nut all the way to the end of the fretboard. And then I'm going to check the frets with the fret rocker just to make sure everything's nice and level. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my crown on and then I'm going to polish. So I'll go through the steps. So right now I'm going to start with the, the filing. 
And you want to make sure, um, I usually put my finger in front of the nut so I don't accidentally bump it and then you have to re-glue it in, it's kind of a pain. So you just got to be careful in this area. And uh, while you're filing, you'll be able to feel a little bit more resistance on the areas where they're not level. So that kind of, it'll give you a, a clue of where most of the work is needed. And then once it's, you know, uniformly smooth when you're filing all the way across, you've, you know, you're pretty well done. Okay. <clears throat> so I wasn't quite careful enough and on my back swing I kind of knocked out the nut here. But uh, that's okay. We'll just have to glue it back in place before we restring but it almost makes it a little easier to get to this top fret now too so I don't have to be so delicate around that area I can just file and maybe get it done a little quicker. All right now I'm going to check with my fret rocker to make sure everything's nice and level before we recrown. All right, so pretty good. A um, couple spots that are just need a little bit of touching up. So a little bit here, a little bit here. I like to mark it with a permanent marker just so I know exactly where I need to work on. So I'm hitting areas that are good already. So let's just go ahead and finish that up and then we'll... All right, because these frets are so low, I'm gonna be using this style of recrowning file. It's got just a slot in there with uh, a diamond file in there. Just makes it a little bit lit easier on these lower profile frets. Um, I'm just probably still going to be marking up the fingerboard a little bit, but uh, I'll show you how we can deal with that afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and file these frets just so the top of the fret has a small, thin surface area. So it'll be like one little shiny line on the top, and that's where the string rests on top of the fret. And uh, the thinner that is, the less surface area for the string and it's going to be less buzz. So I'm going to go ahead and do it and then I'll show you on camera what it looks like when it's finished. Alright, so I just want to quickly show what I mean here. So if you look at this fret, just when it's catching in the light, you see that slight line on the top. So with the crowning file, it's rounding out the sides and leaving that top where we filed um, flat. So that's the little spot where the string rests across the neck. So if you can get all your frets to look like this one after you file, that's about perfect. So you just want a thin line on the top of flat. So now that everything's recrowned, we're going to do a, a sanding just to get these frets ready for the buffer. So I'm just going to use like, like 200 grit is the sanding sponge and then I'm going to use some micro mesh. Uh, they go all the way up to 2400 just to make sure that uh, everything's nice and smooth before I put it in the buffer and that's going to really bring out the, the shine and the polish. Um, I've got a little bit of tooling marks here um, because the frets are so low that the tool was kind of digging into the fretboard just in a few spots. It's relatively minor though, um, and I think it's just going to buff out in the buffer as well as uh, when I put a little lemon oil on there, you shouldn't be able to see it too much. So overall, I'm quite happy with how it turned out here. All right, so I just have it taped off and ready for the buffer now. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it through. The All 
All right, so here is our fretboard after the polishing and sanding and lemon oil. So yeah, it looks great. Actually, this might even be Brazilian rosewood. A lot of these Japanese 60s, 70s guitars, they had uh, Brazilian rosewood fingerboards. And that's kind of what this is looking like. I couldn't really tell before because it was so dried out, but there's lots of red and lots of streak in this. So yeah, it's a nice little bonus on this guitar. And the frets are looking great, nice and super shiny. That lemon oil is really bringing out that shark fin inlays with the gold sparkle. Yeah, it looks great. All right, now I'm just gonna glue in the nut. So all I'm gonna do for the nut is uh, put a couple drops of super glue put it back into place and then I'm going to restring it and then we can check the setup and plug it in and see how it sounds. All right, so I found that the nut had been replaced on this guitar um, when I was just gluing it back in. So I wanted to put a bone nut on there. So I'm just going to quickly show you like uh, in short form how uh, I'm doing this. So this is the old nut and uh, what I did is I took a piece of bone, like a, a nut blank and I made it the same size as the old nut. So, one sec, let it focus here. There we go. Okay, so I made it the same size as the old nut, so the same width, the same length, and uh, what I'm gonna do now is use my nut files. I'm gonna line these up perfectly, so the, old, the new nut's just like the old nut in terms of spacing because the spacing was fine on there. So um, now I'm gonna use my luthier files. I'm just gonna match the string gauges for the files, for the slots, by using nines, that's what I use. Um, I usually go a little bit higher on the files just so we can handle a 10 gauge as well, which is the most common gauges. And then I'm gonna glue it into place and then I can kind of fiddle around with it to make it perfect once it's in place. All right, <clears throat> here it is in all its glory, all fixed up and ready to go. So our electronics are all working now. And uh, I give it a nice polish. So it actually looks like new. It's crazy how good of condition this thing is in. And then we can see our frets are nice and shiny. Our fingerboard's nice and hydrated and dark. And I'm quite sure it's a Brazilian Rosewood fingerboard too, which is cool. And uh, there's our new nut, bone nut. It's got nice spacing, it's cut well. And yeah, there's our headstock. So our action, see if I can at the nut, you can see if I push down on the third fret, it's just resting nicely against that first fret. So good action at the nut. And uh, our relief in the neck is just, just slight. <clears throat> Action at the 12th fret is about a 1, a 1 1.5 at the 12th for the low E, and about a 1.25. So this is quite low action. So let's go ahead and see if there's any buzz anywhere. All right, this thing was buzzing like crazy all over the place before, so let's see if we got rid of most of it or all of it.
great. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. It's uh, you play all the way up the neck with no buzz, and uh, the action is quite nice and low. Like that is that is really low. No buzz anywhere. Plays quite nice. All right, last thing you got to do is just plug it in and see how it sounds. I'm curious to see how these old pickups sound. Plug it into my Deluxe Reverb tube amp. We're just going to get an idea of what it sounds like. Um, I think both of these pickups are microphonic because they're already starting to feed back as soon as they turn it on. So this is my neck pickup. So yeah, this is microphonic as well as the, as the bridge. Check one, two, two. All right, so let's... <laughs> Let's just start off at the bridge pickup. Try the neck pickup. Alright, so final thoughts on the 60s Fujigen uh, Rickenbacker Pyramid guitar. This was uh, a crazy find. Uh, it needed, definitely needed some work, um, but I mean nothing too extreme. Basically just uh, um, a level and crown and a little bit of electronics work. Just actually it was one wire, one solder point. Some tightening and cleaning of the electronics. But uh, this thing is in insanely clean condition for being a 60s guitar. Like, it looks brand new. It's got a Brazilian rosewood fretboard. Um, this model is insanely rare too. I can't find another example of it anywhere on the internet. Um, these pyramid guitars were made in the Fujijin factory in the 60s. So we can date it uh, using that. So we know it's a 1960s guitar. But I can't find another single example of uh, of this Rickenbacker, Rickenbacker model. So that's really cool. And uh, now that it plays and plays great, um, if you can handle a little, bit of, a little bit of feedback from the pickups being microphonic, they do sound really, really good. I played back that footage of me playing and yeah, they really have a nice sound to them. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot like a, a Rickenbacker kind of that uh, jangly bite kind of a sound. Sounds great with a little bit of a distortion. They do feed back, but uh, I mean, yeah, you can control that. So yeah, just an insane guitar for $20 and a little bit of work. 
So there you go, living proof that you can still get deals at garage sales. And uh, yeah, I was pretty blown away by this guitar. Just uh, how clean it is and how it actually sounds. So all hope is not lost. There are deals to be had, so get out to those garage sales and see what you can find. So that's going to be it for today for Beckler Guitars and Repair. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you next time.